What's up world? My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and this is gonna be a quick video on how to use the SD Web Image Swift UI SDK. It's a bit of a tongue twister to say, and it sounds pretty complex, but I promise you the code implementation is super easy. This package is for downloading and caching images in your app. So if you follow my channel, I have covered in the Swift UI continued learning playlist, how to download and cache images yourself. I think it's really important for new developers to do this once or twice on their own. How do I actually download an image? How do I work with image data? How do I save images in a local persistence? How do I create a cache? That's all really good stuff to know. And I think you should learn that first before just using third-party packages. But if you're gonna go and actually build an actual production app, Chances are that some of these packages are gonna do the downloading better than the code that you've written. They're gonna do the caching better than the code that you've written. And they're gonna make it easier by just having a nice API to use. So what might've taken us an hour or two hours to write code ourselves, we can now implement in our code base in less than five minutes. And so that's really the power of using these packages. I've picked this package to use first because there are a lot of image loading SDKs. Several of them are really good. Uh, but I find this one to be just incredibly easy to use. It literally has caching just out of the box and it's only a couple of lines of code to actually implement. Let's jump into Xcode and check it out. And we are back. What is up, everybody? Uh, we're gonna start a new project for this playlist. Let's open up Xcode. Let's create a new project. It'll be an app even though we're not really gonna build an app in this series. Let's call this one Swiftful Thinking. Let's call it SPMs and SDKs because we're gonna be covering a bunch of Swift packages and SDKs in this series. The team doesn't really matter. Add in your team organization identifier. We're not pushing this to the app store, so none of this really matters. We don't need cloud kit. We don't need storage. We don't need tests. Let's click next, save it where you need to save it. Go ahead and click create and let's jump in to Xcode. All right, I'm going to switch my simulator. I'm going to use a iPhone 15 for this and let's get coding. All right. And in this video, we're going to cover SD web image. Let's start by going to the internet. Let's just Google Swift UI SD web image and click enter. It should probably be the first thing that comes up here. We're looking for SD Web Image Swift UI. It's a Swift UI specific package. They have a generic one that's not Swift UI. We want the Swift UI one. And before we get into this, I just want to throw out there that there are a bunch of really good image loading SDKs in Swift. SD Web Image is one of them. Kingfisher is another one. Nuke is another one. There's a bunch of good ones out there. I'm going to cover a couple in this series. But the reason I'm going with this one first is because I find this one to be the easiest to use and also the most performant. So SD Web Image Swift UI, if you come down here, there's some background on it. One of the main reasons that I like this SDK so much is because it has memory and disk caching and it comes just out of the box. So there's really not that much setup we have to do to actually get this to work in our apps. It supports regular images using the web image, which is what we're going to use in this video. It also supports animated images, which I have never used before, but that's pretty cool. There is a very robust cache system and loading system and progressive image loading. A lot of really cool things that we can tweak to get our image loading to be perfect. But what we're going to do is kind of just the basics here, because that's what 99% of apps are going to need. Most apps probably do not need multiple caching and loading systems and so on. Uh, I'm going to come down here just really quickly. I'm going to scroll down real quick and just talk about some of the stuff that's in this readme. And you can see here kind of the basics of how we're going to set this up in code. We call the, we create a web image and pass in a URL, and then we add a bunch of modifiers. So you can see here, this is already really, really Swift UI friendly. This is just add this and add a couple modifiers and you're good to go. There is more details in this readme. I'm not going to go through it all. Go ahead and read it if you're going to add this into your app. But let's get started here and just implement a web image into our project. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on copy for to get this URL. Let's open up our Xcode project. Let's click on the navigator. Let's go to the project package dependencies. And let's go ahead and click the plus sign to add a dependency. 
We could also just click file, add package dependencies, but I'm just going through the navigator manually right now. Let's click this. Let's paste in our URL right here. We can see the readme pull through. This is the correct package, of course. So I'm going to add that to my project. When you're working with these public SDKs, it is a good idea to not check out the main branch and to really just check out the release branches. And for those of you who don't know, you can specify a minimum and a maximum when you're checking out these packages. So here we're going to do up to next major version, meaning right now it's going to give us the 2.2.6. But in a couple days, if this SDK were to release 2.2.7, so it's greater than the current one, but less than the next major version, which is 3.0, then our project will download that updated version. So oftentimes when you're adding these packages, it's a good idea to have something like this, some sort of up to next major version setup. Because if there was a bug in 2.2.6 and then they fix it in 2.2.7, you're going to get that automatically. The reason it stops at 3.0 is because when these packages do these major upgrades from like 2.0 to 3.0, there could be breaking changes. But usually if it's a, if it's a small change, like 2.2.7, there's not going to be any breaking changes there. So that's kind of just this setup here. If that confuses anybody, if we didn't want that setup, we could go to like an exact version and only ever have 2.2.6, or we can go to a branch and maybe go to like the main branch or you can find their development branch or something like that. But let's go with the next major version, 2.2.6 to less than 3.0. Let's add the package. Let it load real quick. Let's click add package. I'm going to click on my target and make sure the package is included in this target. So right now we added the package to the project. But then individually, we got to make sure the packages are in each of our targets. So some projects have multiple targets. And you can optionally decide if you want this package in all of your targets or some of your targets. So if I click on this target, which is the main target in my app, I only have one right now. And I click on signing and capabilities and I'm on the general tab. And if I scroll down here, there is a frameworks, libraries, embedded content, and we can see SD web image Swift UI is already embedded. If you have multiple targets, chances are it's not going to automatically embed in all of those targets. And you're going to want to press plus here and then find it and add it. Cool, but it's already added, so we're good to go. Let's write some code now. I'm gonna right click the navigator, create a new file, a Swift UI view, and let's call this one SD Web Image Bootcamp. And let's click create. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go back to the internet. I'm gonna Google a Lorem Pixum, which is free image SDK online. I use this all the time. And most of their APIs are like random images. So if you click this, every time you click it, you're gonna get one image. If you click it again, you'll get another image. But they also have specific image APIs. So we're gonna go with that for now. Let's just copy this specific image. I guess it's this little puppy here, kind of cute. Let's jump into our code. Let's get this URL going here. So that's what the URL looks like. Of course, we're going to import SD web image Swift UI. And just like they had in the readme, we're going to add a web image and then some modifiers. So back to our code, let's add in a web image. How easy is this? It gives us a URL options. Context is animating. We're not animating this image. Let's just use the basic URL here. And it's an optional URL. So let's just pass in a URL from a string and the string will be our URL here. Check that out guys. Look how fast that was. That was literally the easiest thing possible to get this working in our app. We could end the video here, but let's play around with this a little bit and let's go through some use cases of this image. So firstly, just off the bat, let's put this in our simulator. So I'm going to make this the first view in my project here. Let's build and run it to a simulator. All right, it's showing on my simulator here. What I'm going to do is actually turn off the internet on my computer real quick. I'm going to close the app and I'm going to open up the app one more time. And what do you know? The image has saved and persisted and we didn't have to write any extra code. So if you've been following my series, I did a couple of videos on downloading images and caching images manually. And I think it's really important when you're learning to understand how that works. But when we're building a production ready app, we're going to use these image SDKs because 
they're going to do the image loading and caching and persisting just far better than we could ever write in a couple lines of code. So you saw it, and this is one line of code. We downloaded the image so fast, and it persisted. Marvelous. All right, let's play around with this a little bit. I'm going to jump back into my canvas here. And just like in all images in Swift UI, we're going to probably want to make this one dot resizable. The other image in Swift UI, we're going to want to add some sort of aspect ratio. So we can actually use the native Swift UI modifiers here. So scale to fit or scale to fill. But what I actually use more often is the aspect ratio where we can then just pass in fill or fit. This way I can inject this into the view, which is what we're going to do in a couple of minutes. All right. And let's talk about a couple of the other modifiers that we can use for the web image. I'm going to jump back into the readme real quick and just copy some of these modifiers they have here in their setup. Let's just see what they got. Let's paste them down here. All right. On success closure, resizable, we already did. Placeholder is a good one. So we can actually just put in an image as the placeholder while this one is loading. So we can put here placeholder with an image. I don't know if this one, I don't know if this actually is rendering. Let's just add some text here. All right. Yeah. So the placeholder image just looks like an image. Obviously I would not do that in production. I think the placeholder also has a content closure where we can add in any view as the placeholder. So this is probably better than that one. Let's just do color.red for a second. Yeah, so now we have our placeholder. So maybe something like color.gray opacity 30%. And then we'll do like an overlay with maybe a progress view. Now we have a pretty generic loading state for our image as it loads in. Awesome. I'll put that text back just so we see that failure state again. Here's our placeholder state. They also have the indicator activity here. And it looks like this activity indicator is actually triggering only during the loading state. So we can see it really quickly happening as I change the text here and the screen reloads. We can barely see it when the image is actually loading. So maybe we would do something like a placeholder without our own progress view and have this be, and this, and then, and then this is our placeholder state with a little activity indicator on top of it. That's pretty cool. One thing that I really like here is that they also give us the on success and on failure completions. So I can add in here like a dot on success perform an action. So it looks like this is the image data cache type. I'll put, put that here. And now we can do something like send an analytic like image successfully loaded, or we can do something on the screen if this image actually successfully loaded. And there also is a dot on failure. And on failure, it can give us back the exact error, and then we can handle that as well. Oftentimes in my app, I will use this on failure to then transition this screen or this image to something else. So if this URL for some reason wasn't working, maybe we have an at state up here where we change the URL and then we load a different image on error or something like that. Super cool. This is how you use SD web image. There also is the ability to go ahead and like customize the caches yourself. I'm not going to go through that in this video because I don't think most people are going to need to do that. They have some setup here, create a cache, add in the amount of memory, the disk space that you want to use. That looks like they're using some singleton under the hood. You set the default cache to your custom cache. We're just going to use the default cache. I think most apps are kind of in that realm. Go ahead and read their docs if you want to learn more. That's all we're going to really learn for SD web image today. And I'm going to just wrap up this video with a use case of how I would actually use this in my app, because this is actually not the code that I would add directly into all of the screens in my app. And let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk a little bit about how to actually implement this in a real code base. So first and foremost, I like to create some struct that is specific to maybe this SDK. So I'm, I call this SD web image bootcamp, but in a real app, I would probably call this struct SD web image loader or something like that and create a body in here. And then I'll just put this code directly into the image loader. I'll pass the image loader, pretending like this is my actual app. I will create an image loader in here. And then we're going to pass in the URL because we obviously don't want to hard code this string 
to this URL. So let's pass in a URL of type string. Uh, and we'll pass it in down here. Cool. Let's take that URL and pass it right here. Um, on success, on failure, not really going to worry about those right now. Placeholder is all right. Resizable is fine. I'm going to get rid of this activity indicator because we're not really going to use it. And aspect ratio is something that I'm going to want to customize because some images I might want to make it fit, some images fill. And so again, if I look at this, this is the type content mode. So let's just pass in content mode of type content mode. And I'm going to set it equal to dot fit. Let's, let's set it equal to fill by default. And I'm going to make it a variable here. So this way I can get it in the initializer down here. So I will pass in our URL and the content dot fit. Cool. Looks like it is working. Um, let's just check it. I'm going to make this frame maybe 200 by 200. Looks like it is scaled to fit. Make it scale to fill and see what that looks like. Cool. Cool. Now, a lot of you guys think this is probably good enough. We're good to go. But if this was my actual app, right? Now, so far, this setup is already way better than the original setup we had because now, when I go to build new screens in my app, I can just use the local image loader type and I don't have to import SD web image every time. And I don't have to work directly with the SDK every time. So this would be in one file of my app. And then in another file where I don't even import SD web image, I can now access the SD web image loader, which is this struct here, which is going to be public to my project. So now I don't have to import this every time. I don't have to deal with the SDK. I just know I have my own custom image loader. And the reason this is so important is because obviously it's going to save you time without having to worry about this. But you could imagine a situation in the future where maybe this image loader gets deprecated or we just want to switch to another one. Maybe we want to use Kingfisher or something like that. And if I was importing this and calling web image every time throughout every single file in my app, I'll end up with a case where in order to switch this out, I'll, I'll end up having my entire app and all of these files coupled to this SDK. Whereas now I only have one file that's coupled to the SDK and the rest of them are just referencing this file. So it's much easier to move forward in the future if I ever want to change the SDK or something like that. On that note, if I were to change the SDK, I probably would want to change this from being SD web image loader. So oftentimes what I do in my app is actually create another struct called an image loader, just like a generic image loader of type of view in which let's add a body, open the brackets, and I'm just going to copy and paste this and we'll add in our SD web image loader here, pass in our URL, pass in our content. So it's a super simple struct, but this is now going to be a wrapper essentially for this. So I'll make this a file private so that we only ever access this in this file. We can't actually call this from other files in my app. And then in my app, I'm only actually going to reference my image loader. So I'll put this here. Now you might be thinking, all right, Nick, why do we add that extra layer? Well, because now I can very easily add another SDK and I only have to swap out this line of code, or I can simply do like a if you know, use SDK one else and go ahead and use a different SDK. So maybe I have SD web image loader or in the next video in the series, I'm going to actually cover Kingfisher. So maybe I have a Kingfisher loader here. And so now I could very easily swap out or replace any of these SDKs as a dependency. And this is generally a good architecture for any dependency in your app, because we can basically erase it to just some generic struct and then we have full control over it. So this is how I would actually set this up from day one in my app and then only ever call image loader so that I never have to really worry about refactoring. The last and final little tip that I'm going to give you guys is so possibly the most common bug in Swift UI is basically when we're working with these images, especially these third party SDKs and even async image, 
oftentimes we're going to set a frame for the size that we want the image to be. But what we don't realize is it's actually scale to fill. So it's fitting in the frame, but then it's extending past the edges of the frame. So for example, if I clip this to the frame, we can see that it actually cuts down to 200 by 200 here. And just to show you guys that in another way, if I put this into like a Z stack and I put a, above this a rectangle, let's maybe make it color.red and I give it the exact same frame, we can see that the frame, even though both of these have the same frame, the image is actually extending past the edges of the frame. And this becomes an even bigger problem when we're working in for each loops and especially on the horizontal axis, because oftentimes the edge of this might extend into a different cell or over a different button. And then if the user is trying to click a certain button, but the image is past the frame, then they're clicking on the image and you have all these weird bugs in your app. So a really easy way to solve this, especially when you're working with this setup, is basically what I'll do is put a rectangle on the frame first and then put an image loader as an overlay to the rectangle. So just to show you guys how I would do this, let's revert back to our original setup here. I'm gonna come back and firstly, I'm just gonna put a rectangle on the frame. This is 200 by 200 because that's where my frame is here. And then as an overlay, I'll add the, this image. We can see it's still extending past the edges of the frame, but then I'll just clip to the rectangle. And we don't actually ever need to see the rectangle, so I'll just make it opacity. And I've even seen some engineers, myself included sometimes, actually disabling tap gestures on the image. So you can do allows hit testing as false. So now, even if it was to extend past the frames, the user couldn't actually ever click on the image. And now they're really just gonna click on that underlying rectangle. So if you had a tap gesture on this, so if this was a button, users could actually still click on it, but what they're actually clicking on here is not the image, but the rectangle behind it. Awesome. There's actually one more thing that I wanna show you guys with SD web image and is actually preloading which I find really useful in apps. So sometimes if you know the user is gonna to get to some screen in the future, rather than loading the image when it comes onto the screen the first time, you could add some logic in your app to preload some of that data. And just to show you guys how to do it with the SD web image SDK, I'm gonna create, usually these are some sort of like singleton or like global class for the prefetcher. Maybe it's like an environment variable in Swift UI. Let's call this image prefetcher and open the brackets. Let's make it a singleton. We'll do a static let instance equals image pre, an instance of image prefetcher. And we'll make a private init. And then we're gonna create a function here. We'll do just a func start prefetching. And I'll do another one of func stop prefetching and to do this with SD web image it's really really simple you first create a prefetcher so we'll say let prefetcher equals maybe SD web image prefetcher and maybe we even put this in the at the class level I'll put it up here and then we just access the prefetcher and we'll say prefetcher dot prefetch URLs and most of the time here, I don't care about the progress because I'm just doing this in advance. And we'll just pass in the URLs. It is super simple. Um, and then in the stop prefetching, I'll just call prefetcher.cancel prefetching. So a really, really easy way to implement some sort of prefetching into your app as well. So then if this was my actual app, maybe when the app loads on the first time the app loads on the home screen, I have some sort of function and I can just call um, image prefetcher instance dot start prefetching and pass in all of my URLs. The URLs that are on the screen right now, but URLs are gonna be on the screen in the future. So if you had like a list and you wanted to prefetch cells for the next couple cells that are not yet on the screen, or you wanna prefetch images for the next screen the user is gonna to get to, you could do something like that so that when you actually go to create the web image to actually load the URL, it's gonna load that URL from local memory or from the disk because it already prefetched it. And so now you can have a better user experience. 
All right, that is it from me on SD Web Image. You guys now know how to use SD Web Image. You know how to strategically create wrappers for it to place that into your view. Um, a bunch of different ways to play around with SD Web Image and even how to prefetch images. If you guys are following this series, the next video is going to be on Kingfisher, which is more or less the same thing as this SDK, but it's a different package. And we're going to do a lot of the exact same stuff in that video, as well as a couple other videos in the future. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.